Oh my gosh, so dramatic. That's being a little dramatic, Daphne, just a little bit. Settle down. You have plenty of hay. As always, Olive's just super sweet, doesn't make a peep. Oh my goodness. Well, come on in then, hurry up. Get up there. She acts all dramatic and then she's just very timid when she comes up. You know the way. Oh, now you go up. All right guys, today we're gonna do milk testing. Now we've only got two doughs of milk. Olive and Daphne. The two little girls that we raised up last year and bred. And then about five months later, they each had their own set of kids. And now they're first fresheners. They've been doing really well and they both have already hit their milking star on volume. So I know um, that they'll definitely earn it by the end of the year. Milking stars are a way that you can see if your dough is like, you know, meeting the breed standards or surpassing it. So sometimes people like to advertise that their dough has a lot of milk. They not only have their milking star, but they produce so much that they have really high numbers, you know? You can advertise that. Now we milk tested all of the does this year and Hazel definitely earned it. And then actually Tatum earned it as well. She didn't earn it on volume though, she just earned it on butter, fat, and protein, which isn't anything to brag about. So we're definitely hoping that Tatum actually earns a, you know, a full milking star across the board where it's based on volume and butter fat and protein. So we're gonna milk test Tatum again next year and hopefully she hits that. Trying to get every last bit out. All right, that's all we got from Daphne. Find a way down. No, nope. it goes down this way. All right, let's switch. Come on, Olive, stay. Hey, back up. Salem doesn't gonna go out today because she keeps rubbing her whole body in chicken poop. Why are you doing that, sweetie? All right, let's see how much Daphne produced. Now we have to subtract 0.4, which is how heavy the bucket is. It's okay, she's toward, she's like mid to end of her lactation. So, not too bad. It's also been incredibly hot, so no wonder these girls are just tired of being in milk. Fill this up. Just about halfway. There's a little preservative pill in there. So that milk should start to turn pink. I forgot to bring a second bucket, so I've gotta dump this to the chickens. So we have this clean bucket to use. That is the benefit of having goat's milk, is that you can feed it to dogs, cats, chickens, because it has a more digestible form of lactose. We don't feed it every day, but when we do feed it, we know it's okay for them. Most of the time, those animals can't digest dairy. But in this instance, when you have raw goat's milk, they can. Olive here has the most milk by far of anybody on our farm. And she's got these nice, huge teats. I love it. Just a little bit more than Daphne, not too much more. One pound is about two cups. So if we have to subtract 0.4 from this, we're at 1.4, so she's about three cups of milk, and Daphne's just a little over two. But we measure in weight because there's a lot of foam in there, and we wanna be able to count that as well, and if we just measured in volume, we would count you know, too much volume for that. Already turning pink. So there we go, we're gonna do another milking tonight and fill this up, send this to the lab along with our measurements that get verified once a year, so they make sure that we can't cheat. And then in a few months, we're gonna finish out our milk testing year. That means almost everybody has earned their full milking star. Tatum's just lagging behind a little bit, but everybody else seems to be doing really well. She's Hi, so good. She is so good. She is the best one at doing Stay. what she's supposed to. Bye. She's all excited. Okay guys, the day has finally come for us to freeze dry the milk. 
So normally every morning I strain the milk and I pasteurize it and then I put it in the fridge. But today we're gonna take that milk, we're gonna put it into the freeze dryer. Now, I think the rule is you have to fill the trays only half high so that they don't overfill. Cause I guess they kind of expand when they're freeze dried. Pour it in there very carefully, it was kind of a pain. And then we'll put it in there turn it on and about a day later this is what we have this is crazy it feels like a really light type of that wafer cookie and it just crumbles in my hands so i think the best way to store this is to just kind of mash it all up and get it nice and powdery and then put it in the mylar bags and it's supposed to maintain its freshness for up to 25 years uh so we'll see we'll see how it goes i'm kind of tempted to crack this open in six months to a year and test the freshness so maybe we'll crack it open add some water to reconstitute it and try it and see if it tastes nice and fresh like our goat's milk should and if so then i'm going to save a lot of my milk this way this would be the coolest method to preserve our goat's milk because as you guys know goat's milk can go bad pretty fast usually only like a couple weeks in the fridge before it starts to taste a little bit goaty so stick with us and in about a year or so <laughs> we'll open it and see how it turned out if you'd like to check out the freeze dryer that we use there's a link in the description below so far it's been really fun to use though it can be kind of pricey. So I definitely recommend sharing with family or friends so that you can cut the costs a little bit. But I have to say, freeze drying is a lot simpler than canning. <laughs> Your pigeon wanted to say hi. Yeah. Just wanted to chat for a little bit. Right. Yeah, they're doing good. <laughs> they recognize your voice. He's frozen. Dang it. Oh. I can't see anything. Wi Fi's pretty bad out there. Okay. Well, not much news on the pigeon project. The egg that they had laid a while back never hatched and they never sat on it anyway. So we took that out. They just have been taking a break. It seems like ever since Ethan left, they took a break from laying eggs. I don't see anything in there. But they still hang out together. They still seem happy. And we're just gonna wait and see what happens. I'm just trying to take the best care of them that I know how. I think they're happy in this little place. I love that we made the different levels because they seem to love to be on the top level the most. While I don't know if they've used the elevator yet, I still think that it's kind of cool that they have different levels and they can go up and down. The kitties especially love to come by and watch them. So I'm being very careful that no kitties get into the cage. That would be devastating. Isn't that right, Harley? She loves to come watch them. Same with Pepper Pumpkin out there. And this place definitely gets messy with all the bird poop because we painted it white and pigeon poop is not white. But the pine shavings seem to help. They're doing pretty good. I don't know if they're gonna warm up to me ever though. They love Ethan the most. Oh, Ethan. Gosh, it's harder than I thought having a kid away at college. Ethan's doing great. He's amazing. He's doing all of his homework, obviously, and, and getting a vibe for living on his own. But it's just so weird to not have your kids live with you after they've been with you for the last 19 years. And Lydia is just starting to apply to colleges for next year. So we're gonna be, it's just gonna be me and Kevin and Salem and a bunch of animals. I'm excited for my kids though. I'm excited that they're, you know, going on to new adventures and having new experiences. I think that's really important that they get to meet new people and experience different types of worldviews, but it's definitely not easy for the parents. So pretty soon it'll be just me and Kevin and a bunch of animals. Why do you always get in the pond, sweetie? Okay, so on the back, look, it says to give adults four grams or newborns two grams, but it's in, look, five gram increments. And it drives me nuts, I tell you, nuts. Why? It's a good shot, keep fighting. That was such a good shot, guys, go. I'm tired after that. No, they're tired. They must be pregnant mad or something. 
Now they stop. Oh, she's just gonna lay down. <laughs> all right guys, today we are going to give all of the pregnant does some selenium because selenium and vitamin E is a really important supplement, especially during pregnancy. So I like to give it monthly throughout their entire pregnancy. It's only about like five months that they're pregnant. And so um, let's round them up. We got these two ladies right here that are likely pregnant. We, we don't know yet. Come here. Sam, get out of here. Nice. She had to give her a kiss. Just a tiny bit. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good job. Next it's kinda yummy. She's sweet. Okay, come here. It's really good, I promise. Yummy. Okay. Oh, let's do Tatum, she's right behind you. Hello, Tatum. Open your mouths. Yum. Isn't it orange flavored? I don't know what it's flavored. I haven't tried it. Tilly looks like she wants <laughs> some. Yeah, Tilly always loves yummy stuff. Come here. Oh yeah, you don't even need to hold her. Oh, I, oh, think I don't know. Maybe. Oh, she does not like it. It's yummy, Tilly. What the heck? <laughs> hey, let's do it, Hazel. Come here, just a little bit. It's okay. Oh, no, it's, it's yummy though. Yeah. Oh, she kind of liked it. Just a little bit. A little bit. All right. The reason Raven's in here with the babies is that she decided to jump in. <laughs> she jumped, went on Willow's stump. She jumped through the fence hole and she decided she wanted to be with the little girls. So we're just letting her be in here because she wants to be. That's how long she is. She's as long as her, she's so long. Yeah, they really caught up to Raven quick. Just her, I don't think he's Gotta give the red girls lots of pets. Oh, they're so sweet. These spots change every day, I swear. <laughs> they do, they kind of are a dark cream or a charcoal, they look kind of moldy. <laughs> she's a little moldy goat, aren't ya? Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for joining us in today's video. Don't say anything about my hair. I cut it short, and I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. <laughs> so, um, but I also wanted to say thank you so much for all the kind words about Napoleon. It's such a bummer, and we're still kind of just trying to figure out what we're going to do from here on out. But I really appreciate all of the comments um, and kind words because it really is common to have accidents on the farm. We just... Didn't think it would end like that. So if you'd like to see the video when we bred Daphne and Olive to Napoleon that first time and the funny adventures in that moment, go ahead and click here.